Are you curious about the possibilities of web-based planning within SAP IBP? In this video, I will show you the ins and outs of IBP's powerful web-based user interface. In this video, we will go into detail to the IBP application called Panel Workspaces. To fully understand the structure of the user interface, we will first have a look at the Panel Workspace structure. The Planner Workspace is a personalized interactive dashboard that allows planners to analyze, simulate and adjust key supply planning data in one single view. With its flexible layout, it is intuitive for users to quickly look at and create or customize charts, tables and key figures. For example, a demand planner can use the Planner Workspace to simply compare historical sales data with future demand projections, apply different scenarios and dive into forecast accuracy all in the same interface. A Planner Workspace consists of three general layers. The lowest layer consists of the Planner Workspace components. These are your planning views, analytic charts or master data views. The middle layer consists of your workbooks. Workbooks are a selection of a few components. With workbooks you can save multiple variants of the same workbook. Every variant of the workbook will always contain the same components. However, you are able to save unique filter values for every workbook variant. Lastly, we have the top layer, the Panel Workspace itself. The Panel Workspace is a collection of workbooks, alerts and tasks. The Panel Workspace can be shared centrally or can be maintained by the panels themselves. It is important to note that every planning view, chart and workbook is an entity of its own. For example, when you change a planning view that is used in multiple workbooks or even in multiple workspaces, the changes will be applied to all of them. It is therefore important to decide how your organization will use Planner Workspace and assign the correct authorization for every user. Let's take a look at an actual Planner Workspace. At the top part of the screen, we can see the settings for the Planner Workspace itself. Here you can select the planning area version or perform actions like refreshing and saving data, create scenarios or even run application jobs like copy operators. For example, if your company just increased the capacity of your production and you want to see how much demand you can now fulfill, then you could create a scenario. Lastly, at the far right there is an options button for further customization of your panel workspace. On the left we have the navigation menu. You can pin or unpin the menu by clicking on this icon in the top right corner. Pin it when you want to have the menu readily available or unpin it if you prefer to have more screen space in your workbook, for your workbooks. For this particular planner workspace, we have made one workbook which has two variants. When we go between the workbook variants, you notice that the planning view and the chart remain the same. The filter values are however saved within the variant. To add a new variant, click on the options icon for the workbook and select create variant. Give the variant a name and click on the create button. As you can see we have now made a variant. Let's fill in the correct customer region. Now we will save the variant so our selection is visible the next time we open this workspace. We have now made a change to an existing workbook, namely we have added another variant to this workbook. Now we are going to create a new workbook from scratch. To do this we click on add workbook at the top right. We click on create and then we fill in the name of the workbook and we need to define at least one variant for this workbook. Now we can see the new workbook in the navigation menu. When you are making changes, make sure that you are in design mode in the top right corner of the screen. When you are in design mode, you can add and change the components in your workbook. Let's create a planning view. We will give it a name and define a time period and level at which we would like to interact with our data. After that, we will select the attributes 
to define at what level we would like to have our data. For this example, let's choose product family and customer region. Now let's select the demand planning quantity adjusted and final key figures. And apply the changes. Let's select which filters we want to use and fill in one of the product families. And now we have made our own planning view in our new workbook, which will be available for your planning actions. These planning views or entire workbooks can also be shared with your colleagues. Let's take a look at the alerts. Within SAP IBP, we have the ability to define custom alerts. In this example, we have a custom alert where we compare the statistical forecast quantity, the sales forecast quantity, and our actuals from the prior year to our local demand plan quantity. When the values are above or below a certain range, we will get an alert in our panel workspace. For this example, we have made three subscriptions on the alert. Each of them filters on their own segment to provide more overview for the planner. In the navigation menu, we will go to the alert section. Here you can see we have added the three alert subscriptions. When we open one of the alert subscriptions and select one of our alerts, the alert will open the correct workbook and fill out the filters at the top part of the workbook. You can manage which workbook is supposed to open with your alert in the Manage Subscriptions menu. As you can see, you can assign unique workbooks for every alert scenario that you have defined. Another nice trick is that we can define contextual navigation to components that you want to have available via a simple right-click in the planning view. In this example, we would like to check certain attributes for our selected product family. We have predefined a master data view for the product family. Now let's set up the contextual navigation to it. First, make sure you are in design mode. Then right-click on one of the data cells in your planning view. Select Create Contextual Navigation. This opens the menu where you can completely define how and which components you would like to have available in your panel workspace via a simple right click. Within the contextual navigation menu, you can define whether the component you would like to navigate to is already in a workbook, or we can even set up a navigation to another system like your S4 or ECC system. We select the type and then the name of the component. Next, we can give on the navigation a name. This text will appear when we right-click within the planning view. And we can select where the navigation will be available. Then we will select the relevant attributes, define how our filter behaves, and lastly, we can check everything in the review step. As you can see, we now have direct access to our master data entries for this particular product family. A lot more is possible. Try it out for yourself and let us know if we can help out in any way.